Let's talk about how to pass HSBC's video interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English. Welcome to another video in the Pass the Interview video series where we break down the interview processes and most common questions for the world's most famous companies to help you get hired. So let's get into it. Today, we're gonna to talk about HSBC. HSBC is the second highest ranked bank behind JP Morgan in the Times Top 100 Graduate Employers and is going to be looking to hire about 600 graduates this year. The Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation is 156 years old, serving over 40 million customers in 64 countries. HSBC recently hit the press due to the fact that they publicly said that they would support China's stance in Hong Kong and all the troubles that have happened over there and also more recently, the fact that they said that they would let their workers work from home on a Friday and do Zoom Fridays. So I guess that's something. One thing I really find attractive about HSBC, and this has been true since 2018, is that they have followed PwC and setting up a new headquarters in Birmingham. They actually invested over 200 million pounds in the West Midlands, and they have two and a half thousand staff now based in Birmingham. This follows the likes of Bank of America, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and a lot of banks who have gone to places like Dublin, Chester, Glasgow, and have outsourced some of their back office operations because it's a really great opportunity for graduates who don't want to go to London. Quick fun fact, HSBC's head offices are always designed with feng shui principles in mind. The two golden lions called Stephen and Stitt, which sit at the mouth of HSBC's UK headquarters in Birmingham are there to enable the correct flow of chi or energy to come through the building. So let's talk about HSBC's video interview this video is going to be a little bit different. I just want to warn you because to be honest, when we had a look and did our research into what different candidates were saying about the process, they said a lot of different things. Some of them said they had a short high of you interview. Some of them might have had an hour long interview. Some of them may have had a telephone interview. So as ever, it's up to us to really present good information, high quality that is helpful for you. So what I'm going to do today is, is that I'm actually just going to pick out a series of questions that I found that either highly likely or something for you to think about. And I've actually picked out nine questions for you today, six questions I'm going to cover in depth. And this is going to cover motivational and SJT style questions and one competency question. And also I'm going to talk about three technical questions to think about related to this role. Now, any of you who have watched our videos before will remember in the video that I did about JP Morgan and Barclays that a lot of the banks now are altering their interview processes, or at least they have been for some time to be specific to the role. And the same is true of HSBC. So make sure that you're aware of that and that you know to expect that. Right. So let's talk about the questions if you're wondering about how to prepare answers for questions, how long should I speak for? How much should I write? I would aim for two minutes. That's a good safe bet. And that's about 250 words. Good news for any of you. If you're sitting there thinking, do you know what? I really struggle to write scripts. I struggle to write answers. We've got just the thing for you. We've recently released a series of templates and sample answers on our brand new Gumroad store. And you can buy these all for less than the price of a takeaway Domino's pizza. The reason why we released these templates and sample answers was because we had so many students ask us about how can I write this question? The problem that you have of a lot of videos that you watch today about interviews is they will tell you kind of robotically what to say. Whereas the way that we tend to approach these types of questions is things to think about, how to say it and why you should say those things. And those templates are going to be a massive help to you and they're going to really cut down the amount of time it takes for you to write out the perfect answer. So check us out on Gumroad. OK, so let's get into those questions. For those of you who have watched the video before, it's going to be no surprise. Yeah, boy. If you're enjoying this video, please, guys, smash that like button. Drop us a comment about what video you'd like us to do next and make sure you subscribe to the channel to get new videos every week to help you get hired. So the first question is obviously going to be why HSBC? So if you're thinking about why HSBC, please don't give out a generic answer. 
you would have already heard some good facts that I spoke to you about, like that they have over 40 million customers, that they operate in 64 countries, they're 156 years old. How do I know that these are good facts? Because I can't say them about anybody else. So a good way to think about this is to think, what are five facts that I could only say about HSBC? And more importantly, what are five facts that are really interesting to you? I spoke to a wonderful young man who booked one of our hourly sessions, which you can do down below in the description. And he was talking to me about going to work for JP Morgan Chase in the United States. And we were talking about his answer for why JP Morgan. He said, you know what? I sound a little bit flat. I sound a bit like I'm reading out a list. And I was like, yeah, do you know what, dude? Cause you're not interested in what you're saying. And actually when he got to a certain part, when he talked about diversity and what JP Morgan was doing there, I heard his tone of voice go up. And as soon as I heard that, I knew that he was interested in what he was talking about. So don't just list out those five facts. Make sure it's something that is interesting to you. Question number two, why this role? Of course, they're going to say to you, why do you want to work in investment banking? Why do you want to come and work in risk, in uh, operations, in da, 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 right? So how do we prepare for this? So this is a twofold answer. Number one, explain what you'd be doing time and time again i deal with this with candidates who book sessions with us and they'll be like oh i want to do this job because it's good and i get paid a lot and blah 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 and i just think dude come on that's the same as everybody else you don't want to be giving the answers that are the same as everyone else so first of all what would you be expected to do in this operations role at hsbc well you know i'd be working to support the traders what reconciliation and statements signing off payments, da, 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 right? That's the first half. So anybody watching you in that video is gonna go, oh, do you know what? That guy's cool. He knows exactly what he's going to do. What's the second part? Well, you're gonna talk about the skills that make you good at that role, whether that's attention to detail, numeracy, the fact that you're good at Excel, whatever that may be, those are the really two good two parts of those answers. By the way, guys, if you're struggling to answer why this company, why this role, you can either check out our sheets on Gumroad or if you just want something for free, click down in the description below for our free cover letter course on Skillshare. Now, question three to six are some more different questions that are really specific to HSBC. So pay attention. 100% full on attention. What would you do if a client was left unsatisfied from HSBC service and claimed to stop cooperate with the bank? This is a cool question. I like pick, picking out questions that I think are sort of new and novel and I don't normally see. This is a situational judgment question. So first of all, a good thing to think about whenever you get asked a question that you're not sure of is, why am I being asked this question? Why are they asking me this? Well, really this is about customer service and resolving conflict. So how am I gonna break this down? Well, first of all, if a client is unsatisfied with the service, I would wanna call them and say, hey Dave, I understand from your email that you're really unhappy about the service that we provided. Can I just ask why? Can I ask what is it that we've done has left you so unhappy? I just wanna to listen to you to make sure that we can improve our service, if not for you, then for other customers. That gives the client, the customer, the opportunity to essentially vent their frustration. You know when you get really upset and you just wanna go and vent down the phone? That's exactly what we're doing here. So we give them the opportunity to vent, we listen to them, we're studious in what we're doing. We're not trying to correct the customer. We're not trying to say, well, actually, you know, you need to stay with us because of X, Y, Z. We just need to listen to them, right? The next thing that we're going to do is say, okay, listen, Dave, I completely understand that the way that we process those payments was slow and it's something that we need to rectify. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and speak to my manager and see if there's anything that we can do to make sure that that doesn't happen again for you because I know how crucial it is to process payments quickly for your business. For example, right, it could be many, many different things, but the point is you're trying to say to the customer, I hear you, I want to offer you a solution and I want to show you that I care about you and I want to do something about that. Now the customer can still leave, but the customer is not less likely to leave if you say, please don't leave, please don't leave me, right? That's not gonna be effective. The customer wants what they want and you want what you want. So in order to bring those two things together, you're gonna to need to be able to listen to what they're saying. Then you can come back, send them an email, whether that be something else, another service that you can provide, but basically dealing with their problem because change 
well, think about it, right? Think about who you have your bills with, your phone with, even if they're not great, most people don't want to change because it's a pain in the B. It's a pain in the B to change your telephone provider and all that kind of stuff. Exactly the same thing here. Question number four, describe why it is important to build relationships between colleagues from different departments. I love this question. I've seen this question before. PwC used to ask this question quite a lot. It was about relationship building. Well, why is it important? And is this a strength question or is this a competency question? Well, to be honest, it could be both. It could be like, well, it's important to build relationships with colleagues from different departments because HSBC is really big. So each of us has our own individual piece of the puzzle or information that we have on a client, but only by communicating holistically, making sure that the channels are open and really understanding the needs of our customers and what they're going through, can we deliver really great service from the bank as a whole? Cool, that's how we'd answer it as a strength-based question. What about a competency-based question? Well, we'd provide an example. Maybe when we had to deal with different people from different departments and this can be in any job could be in a fast food job i used to remember when i used to make burgers at kfc it was my very first job because i wanted to buy a nokia 3310 my mum said i'm not paying 100 pounds for mobile phone go and get a job and i went and got a job at kfc and my job was making the burgers because i was too shy to work on the tills i didn't like it so i said you know what i'll make the burgers so you would have to communicate because someone would come in and say oh they want uh, this burger with no lettuce or this burger with extra mayonnaise or a chicken burger with extra chicken, whatever it is. So that was a bit of communication. Whatever you're doing, if you're a waiter, if you're working behind a bar, you're communicating. There's stuff that's going on there, right? And you can use that in your example. Question number five, what is your most important strength and how do you think it will support you in HSBC? Cool, another great question. I know that lots of people struggle with this question. It's the whole like greatest strength, biggest weakness question. But something to think about is number one, what are they looking for in the job description, right? So someone will sit there and go, well, my greatest strength is that I'm very confident. I think, dude, no one cares. That's not what we're asking for. I didn't ask if you're really good at juggling, but if you want to be a circus clown, juggling is good. And it's exactly the same when talking about this. So when you're thinking about the greatest strength, my first port of call, I would look at the job description, I think, well, what are they really looking for? What's the first thing that they mention? Like, we would really like candidates who have great attention to detail. Ooh, smart. So the money is, is that I need to say that I have good attention to detail. If you genuinely don't have that, or you feel like it's not honest for you to say that, then just move down. And how do you think it will support you in HSBC? But well, it's gonna help me get the job done. Why is attention, for example, why is attention to detail important? Well. At HSBC, when preparing reports and doing research for clients, we deal with a lot of data from a lot of different sources. Having good attention to detail means that we can make sure that our clients get the best information that is reliable, that is valuable, and helps them to make the correct investment decisions or decisions for their business as a short answer, right? So that's something to think about when you're kind of thinking, well, what strength would I say? Don't think, just look at the job description. And finally, question six, how would you feel about working with new colleagues and how would you approach building a successful relationship with them? Again, great question, because that's exactly what you're gonna be doing, right? Everybody's been the new guy at work. I can remember my very first job when I graduated from university was at a construction company and I was bricking it. Bricking it is basically um, slang for like pooping, I was gonna poop my pants, right? Because I came in and everyone was much older than me and they looked more experienced and people were picking up phones and talking like businessy language. And I was like, oh. I was there, my suit's sweating, right? And um, basically what I did was I just started to get to know people and just sort of say like, hi, my name's Mike, uh, I've just joined. Like, who are you? What do you do? Uh, if there's anything I, that I can do to help you, just let me know. So I just went around and I was just generally friendly to people, but everybody had the time for me because they were busy. Right. And that was the thing that I kind of learned. It wasn't about me. It was just about the fact that like, uh, I've got three quotes to get out before 11 a.m. Go away. Or they might go, oh, actually, now that you're here, I really need help with X, Y, or Z. So how would you feel about working with new colleagues? Well, I'd feel great. It's a really exciting opportunity. I met some wonderful people at that company. And every company that I've worked at since, I have met really great people. Not everybody was my company. 
Some people are douchebags. That's just the way that it is. But I feel good because I kind of like meeting people, not loads of people, but like one-on-one -on -one or a small group. I quite like that. And then how would you approach building a successful relationship with them? Well, you know, be honest, be helpful, be open-minded and be willing to learn. I find that both as a coach, as an entrepreneur and as an employer, these are things that I really look for in people. If they're really just kind of honest, open-minded and willing to learn, that's pretty much the how of being a good employee from my books. Now, of course, there are people who might ask you to do more things that you want to do and all that kind of stuff and office politics. But in the beginning, I think that's a really good way to live. It's like how honest, open minded, willing. Cool. So a couple of technical questions to think about, because these might come up in your interview and these are related to the role that you're going to be doing. And I give you these technical questions, not because necessarily I know the answer to them, but it gives you an idea of the level of difficulty. A lot of times when speaking to candidates, they don't know how difficult the technical questions are going to be. So they kind of struggle with that. They're like, uh, should I read the Financial Times? Do I need to read The Economist? Should I basically revise everything I've ever learned about finance ever? I'm like, dude, no, it's fine, relax. So the technical questions would come up, which was like, what do you know about profitability at HSBC? You know nothing, read that annual report. What is, why is it important to focus on financial goals? Annual report, name three current trading risks, Bloomberg. Right. So this is not that difficult, but it is quite good to read a little bit into the annual report. What are the divisions of the bank that are doing well? What's more profitable? What's less profitable? It's a little bit more in depth than you'd expect this for front office roles, but it's definitely worth doing. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video all about passing HSBC's interview. Please hit a like, comment about what video you'd like us to make next. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get new videos every week to help you get hired. Bye.